Hello, this is a virtual pathology specimen taken from our virtual pathology museum, and this shows the tongue, the pharynx, and the laryngeal structures. The diagnosis here is laryngeal edema due to allergic reaction. Let's first orientate ourselves. So we have the epiglottis here, which is actually quite swollen, and we have the larynx and the trachea. And this is the posterior view, so turning this around, we can appreciate the thyroid cartilage anteriorly. What we see here is a swollen epiglottis as well as a larynx, and the mucosa here is stretched out and thicker. And one of the ways to appreciate the degree of swelling is to compare this with a normal counterpart. Here we have on the left side the anterior aspect of the virtual specimen that we have just looked at and on the right side we have another example. This actually shows you the normal thyroid gland and here is the thyroid cartilage and the epiglottis. So turning this back around we can appreciate the degree of swelling especially of the epiglottis and if we compare this directly, we can see that the epiglottis is much more slender and thin, and we do not see this marked swelling. So edema of the laryngeal and pharyngeal structures in this instance is due to an allergic reaction. It is seen in systemic anaphylaxis, which is a type 1 hypersensitivity reaction. Often the triggers would include antibiotic ingestion, for example penicillin, or exposure to food allergies such as peanuts, perhaps shellfish, and also bee venom. So what happens is that the antigen binds to an IgE antibody, which is previously formed from prior exposure. And this happens on the mast cell surface, which then activates the mast cells, and there is then release of preformed inflammatory mediators. There is also release of other mediators which are newly formed, which give rise to a more delayed effect. However, among the preformed mediators, we have histamine, which is a main player, and this gives rise to vasodilation, increased vascular permeability, smooth muscle contraction, and mucus secretion. So together, all these effects contribute to airway obstruction. For example, increased vascular permeability gives rise to edema, swelling, and smooth muscle contraction causes bronchoconstriction, and also mucus can plug up the airways. Clinically, the patients will experience urticaria or hives, itching, widespread edema, and this can be seen in the tissues around the eyes as well as the mouth, and respiratory distress from laryngeal edema as we see here. This can also, of course, cause hoarseness because the vocal cords are affected, and bronchoconstriction, which again contributes to respiratory distress, obstruction, and stridor. And you can access this virtual pathology specimen, just as I showed you earlier, through our virtual pathology museum in our online resource path web. The registration link is in the video description, or you can simply Google PathWeb NUS and click on the registration tab. And here is the side-by-side -side comparison of the very swollen epiglottis and laryngeal structures compared to a normal epiglottis and larynx. Hence, in summary, this is an example of pharyngeal structures with the palatine tonsils and laryngeal structures showing marked edema as a result of an allergic reaction with the key pathological processes being vasodilation, increased vascular permeability, bronchoconstriction as well as mucus plugging. And without immediate treatment to relieve the airway obstruction, whether using epinephrine or using physical means, this can potentially be fatal. Thank you.